Hello and welcome to the show. Now the Car Throttle August Challenge would be on Project Cars once more and it was a rather interesting one. I fancied giving it a try. We would be heading to the Glen Cairn. I think that's how it's pronounced. I'm sorry if it isn't. That's as close as I'm going to get to it. Uh, the go-kart track around here. Now this is a challenging circuit and while it wouldn't be using the go-kart itself I thought I would uh, show off just what it's like with one of these it is incredibly bumpy the elevation changes are by far the biggest challenge you will have on this circuit this latter part of the lap is a relatively straightforward fact, I love this corner this corner is fantastic when you get it right relatively sim simple straightforward sections but once we start dealing with these bumps with these hills Especially in a go-kart, it is incredibly tough. Also, the curbs are horrendously vicious. Uh, with the go-kart, you put a wheel on them, you'll spin. So, you'll see, I mean, I'm running close to them, but you can only get away with touching them at a couple of places. Uh, this turn one, incredibly fast, turn in, it is bumpy, and then sort of it's turn two, three, four section up here. <laughs> if you are going quickly in a go-kart, it will have at least two wheels off the ground, sometimes four. It's the landing, is what happens to the go-kart when it lands after going through the air, is where things get a little bit challenging. Uh, it is quite easy, in fact, it's very easy, very easy to spin through that section. It, uh, there's like sort of one flowing section, and then we've got again worry about downhill bumpiness. And we come to a hairpin, relatively straightforward. I'm actually running a little bit wide on the on the exit there. And uh, yeah, it's a intense lap around this track, most most definitely. A rewarding lap when things go right, but very easy, as you see here, for things to go wrong. Too much airtime for me or with the cart, and we uh, go round in a circle. Of course, such a small light vehicle, very easy to spin. Now, to access the vehicles so that you can run any car at the go-kart track, when you select the track and you go into change vehicle, it'll only show the two carts on the quick select. However, you can run any car that you want. You go into the My Garage, into the Select Vehicles, and then you can find any car to use. Now, for this challenge, we are using the Caterham 7 Classic, which, let's face it, is perhaps a more suitable vehicle for driving around a go-kart track than a lot of the stuff that uh, I would tend to use. Still, though, very large vehicle tackling a incredibly incredibly technical circuit and not you know quite uh, quite designed for a go-kart track but uh, never mind so it was off to do some practicing with the vehicle and things didn't take long to uh, get a little bit sideways and then a lot bit in the air got a wheel on the grass and the catering is notoriously oversteery with that wheel on the grass I couldn't gather it back up in time and we were aiming towards the steepest section and that gets a very very big air time you do not want to be going across the grass there you just get launched too much into the air this like i said this corner i love this corner it's a fantastic corner to drive around the next turn though if you're out of position on the way in trying to get the car stopped and turned especially when you're in you know this catering that doesn't have the same turning circle as a go-kart you get it wrong and you're not going to be able to maintain speed or, or in in this case i'm just simply not going to be able to get it turned i think i was on the brakes a little bit too much and yeah just couldn't get the weight transferred and the car would be uh, would be a goner another thing to watch out for as i come around the final corner i get a little bit of kick of oversteer i don't quite line myself back up again with uh, avoiding the uh, start finish line i was trying to not do too sharp for steering movements and in the end didn't do enough in the way of steering movements and that caused me a fair bit of trouble. This time, managed to do it a bit better. Uh, still though, running very, very close to that uh, gantry. This turn one, I turned in too soon and then couldn't correct it all in time. Messed it up across the crests and you got to go around in a circle. It's not as violent as it is with the go-karts. You know, that's to be expected. This thing is much bigger, much heavier. It is stabler across these bumps, but you get it wrong and you're still going to be in trouble. This time, uh, just aimed for slightly the wrong part of the corner. Again, you're turning in a fraction too soon. You're clipping that curb. You're going to launch the car in the air. And there is very little you can do because you've got such little space to work with. There is no real margin for error, especially when you're dealing with the bumps. Also, it doesn't help when your steering wheel malfunctions. As we're going around the final corner, everything just locked up. No idea why. It would have been going fine up until that point. But, uh, yeah, that, that's not really a line that's... Uh, <laughs> you want to be taking through that section and it was the bumps down here that were by far the biggest challenge I actually get it spot on through the first bit but I'm too far to the left find a, a very bumpy section of grass on the outside and spin I guess about the the only time I spun coming up the hill that's um 
yeah, a, a kind of a new way to have problems, but it's something that you really want to be avoiding. There's also something else with this challenge. Even if you're getting everything right with the bumps and so on, you absolutely fry the tyres. In just a few laps, the tyres overheat massively. You can see with the, uh, the telemetry down by my uh, gears and speed in the bottom right-hand side, it is the rear left tyre that cooks on this car. And you keep running it, you will just be going slower and slower and slower. And this is the thing. I was having to adopt a slightly different driving style to my normal one to get any lap time out of the case room. Now, normally I don't like oversteer in a car. I drive quickest when I have a perfectly planted car. The trade-off for that is often a little bit of understeer. That works for me. Okay, that, that, that's just how I drive my cars. The case room is quite an oversteery vehicle. Naturally, I did use a, a tune that I found from the internet that just helped calm it down a little bit, but you actually need some oversteer in the caterham. You kind of have to throw it about a lot. I tried driving it smoothly. I tried driving it the way that I want to drive the car, but it just doesn't work. I just can't get the same speed out of it. You do have to wrestle the car around quite a lot. You really have to throw it about through the corners. You're kind of using a lot of the weight transfer through some, especially for the hairpin through a lot of the um, slightly slower corners. You've got to use the weight transfer to get the back end turned, and then you can carry a fair bit of speed. But in doing that, you overheat the tyres. About four laps in and the tyres are pretty ruined. You keep going, I'm eight laps in here. You've just got no rear grip. You're just going slower and slower because you've got less and less grip. Not that there is a huge amount of rear grip to start with, but it just gets worse and worse as you go through here. So, yeah, your, your fastest laps, in the end, I was just all in the wrong position, and I knew the tyres were shot anyway. Your fastest laps are going to be probably your first and second flying lap. After that, it's yeah, it, it's pretty much had it. It took uh, a bit of time to just to really... It was really learning this bumpy section. This was where the time was made and lost through here, trying to find the right the right lines to take. Of course, you want to be taking as much speed as you can, and finding that perfect line was a real, a real tough challenge as we come. The, in these corners, a lot of it was sort of just throw the car into the turn. Yes, you're going to get some some oversteer. You're just going to have to to deal with that. And the catering was relatively, relatively controllable when it was when it was doing all of that. But uh, yeah, <laughs> a slightly different driving experience for me here as we wind it up onto what would be my fastest lap, a big slide out of the final corner. You break, I break relatively early on this first turn, get the car turned, get the car settled. Now, as we come across the crest, you want to stick to the left because you want to make sure you don't cut the corner on the right for the next part. Now, up towards the jump, I actually get more airtime than I really wanted to. However, in doing that, I kind of bounced the rear end round. So for the next corner, it was uh, quite nicely lined up. I could get a good exit from that turn towards my favourite corner on the track. Turn in, the back end may well step out on you. Don't worry about it again. Make sure you've got that front end aimed nicely for the exit. And that's what I'm doing through a lot of these turns. I'm using the rear of the car to kind of just using the weight transfer to spin the rear of the car so I can get the front end straightened for the exit of the corners. We run around the final turn. I actually get a big kick of oversteer. I didn't really want to be getting that, but it would be a 46.355 from the caterham. It's very weird, I know, hearing me say about, you know, trying to basically get the rear of the car sliding to complete stuff. I end up jumping the, the corner on the next the next run and gave up on that lap. The tires are pretty much gone anyway. But that was how you had to drive the caterham if you wanted to get any speed. Now, of course, a caterham at a go-kart track is just that little bit too sensible for me. So before I finished up, I had to have a go with something that bit crazier. And naturally, I am drawn towards a V8 supercar considerably larger and heavier and a hell of a lot more power in this. Thought it would be fun to take it around this twisty circuit. I also was curious about the lap times. You see, the Caterham did the 46.3. When I took around the, the 125 shifter car, that did a 38.7. And I wanted to see where the V8 supercar would fit into all of that. And in truth, it's fast. A 39.2 I set around this track with the Falcon only half a second off a go-kart around here. It's not bad. Not bad going at all. And you will notice my driving style rather different with the Ford than I had to have with the Caterham. Now, the only thing I changed setup-wise on this car was a quicker steering rack, a fair bit quicker, just so that it could actually get around the turns. But uh, you couldn't drive this car in the same way. The Caterham, there's just too much power and the track is too small for the Ford. If you did start throwing this car about, as I was 
with the Caterham, you're going to have an accident. It's just too powerful to be doing that. So it's back to a much more me sort of driving style with this one. Nice and smooth, as little wheel spin as possible, no oversteer if you can, uh, can get away with it. Doesn't mean things can't go wrong. I run too much across the curb, and you can see how much, even with a big touring car, how much running across these curbs can upset the vehicles. And, you know, you can imagine when you do that with a go-kart, why that thing spins out and has so many, so many issues. Also, have to be careful. For this final corner, you wanted to have changed up third before you reached the turn. I didn't here. I changed up as I went to the turn, and that <laughs> gave us a very, very big slide from the, from the Falcon. Yeah, it was good fun. It was good fun in, in the uh, V8 supercar and surprisingly fast. So, there we go. That is uh, is my attempt, 46.3, for this uh, August Challenge. It is very, very good fun. From the, the drive of the V8 supercar, I actually learned why you have to really throw the Caterham into these corners. The reason is... First gear in this car is too short, it's useless, so you've got to stay in second gear, but out of some of the very, very slow corners, uh, second gear just doesn't quite give you the umph. But if the car is sliding, if you've got the wheels spinning, it actually kind of gets going that little bit better. Whereas a V8 supercar, you have no issues with that. A V8 supercar has got more than enough power and torque to pull in second, no problem, whereas the Caterham doesn't quite, so that's why, I think at least, that's why the sliding about is helping. That and, of course, by pivoting on with the back of the car, you do get the front end straightened up better for the exits. They're, they're the two reasons why I think this driving style was working with the Caterham, why it was working with giving me lap time. I mean, driving it sensibly, I could still get it into the low 47s, but, uh, yeah, oh, I, think I, might have even got, I might have even got one, for, one very high 46, uh, driving it sensibly, but... Yeah, you've really got to throw the case around. It was it was good fun. It was it was really good fun messing about with this. I'm always a fan of taking inappropriate cars to silly tracks and seeing what you can do with them. The Caterham is is relative as far as taking a full size car on a go kart track goes. The Caterham seven, yeah, this is a fairly fairly sensible thing. Relatively low powered, good handling thing to to mess around with. It's, nevertheless, though, it is an entertaining challenge, and I very much recommend that uh, you have a go with it. In the description of this video, there will be a link to the card holder post, so you can submit your times for this challenge. And I also link the setup that I used for this, so you can have a go with that as well, and see if that helps you. To be fair, the standard setup I got in the 46s is with as well, so it's, it's, yeah, it doesn't make a huge difference. However, that is it for this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, uh, goodbye.